This is John Quinn, and this is Law Disruptive. And we're talking about the development of associates uh, at a big law firm, specifically at Quinn Emanuel, our law firm. And today we're talking to Matt Arrow, who's sort of a midterm associate. He's not a newbie, he's not a brand new lawyer. He's not a senior associate either, but he's been with us a, a couple of years now. And Matt, first, uh, it's great to have this chance to chat with you, and I'm really interested in hearing your feedback about what it's like being a sort of a midterm associate at our firm. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Now, we work in the same office here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and I guess you joined us uh, during the pandemic or just yeah, before? Yeah, October 2021, so was kind of right in the middle of, uh, I guess, the, the vaccine rollout and somewhat coming back into the office. I'm not sure whether we've actually even met in person before, have we? Maybe I, but it, it would be like at a, an event or something like right. that. You know, it's not like we've had the opportunity to actually work. We have, that's the next thing I was yeah. going to ask whether we'd work together. Cause even if we hadn't met in person, we might've worked together. That's possible. That, that is certainly I'm true. I'm now I, working with an associate, I think is in Atlanta. I think I'm not positive sure, yeah. on a case. And another associate who's in New York is seamless, but we've never met in person. Right. No, I, I, I don't think we've had the pleasure yet. Um, maybe this will spur. I hope so. Uh, as I say, it's a pleasure to, to uh, chat with you about your experience at our firm. So what's it been like now? You're not a newbie. You've gotten some experience uh, as an associate at a big law firm. How's it been going for you? I think well. Um, yeah, and I, I certainly hope that others think well, too. It, um, to some extent, it is like getting thrown in to the deep end of a pool where you're pretty sure you know how to swim but you are also gonna kind of learn how to do it while you're doing it. Um, but then at this point now, um, I feel comfortable with a variety of things that I have now had a couple of opportunities to do. And so it's sort of like I'm ready to now take that next step and that next step, you know, maybe to keep going with the analogy or the metaphor, it's sort of like now I'm ready to actually like swim to the other side of the, the pool as well. So you feel like you've made some progress since you were a first year? And, and tell us about that. What was it like being a first year at our firm? Uh, was it intimidating? Did you feel like, you know, how am I going to ever learn how to do this? What's this all about? What was, what was your state of mind and what has your progress been? I mean, sort of all of the above as well as um, genuine like support along the way. Um, I, I think this might be a, a misconception that some uh, young people going into law school people might have about big law firms is that, you know, it's just going to be razor blades and like the, you know, get cut up and grind all over the place. There are, there are people here who have been in your shoes before. Um, and they, while they want to see good work, quality work from you, they know that that quality work comes from supporting you in the process and getting you to that point. Um, so, I mean, while the first so long, yeah, it, it can feel daunting. It's, suddenly you're working for some of the biggest clients in the world who have large dollar figures at, at stake and have a lot, of, um, a, lot of, a lot on the line, really. Um, at the same time, though, you come in, you have some skills, people know how to foster those skills and then show you basically how you can then contribute in each little step along the way. Um, and so I'm, I'm somewhere on that, that track at right. this point. Well, I mean, you, you make it sound, uh, it sounds like your experience has uh, been overall really good, but I mean, have there been moments where you thought maybe too much was expected of you? You're asked to do something you weren't, felt like you weren't really prepared to do, or maybe somebody, you got some criticism that you thought was unfair. I mean, you can tell me. I mean, we're not looking <laughs> just to uh, necessarily paint a, a a totally positive picture here. We, we want honest feedback. Tell us, have there been moments where you kind of struggled? Almost anything you do, with the exception of maybe just kind of menial research or something like that, is something new. It is something that you have not done before, and there's something on the line too. Again, these are actual clients, real world problems. And so, um, you, if you stop and think about it a little bit, it can just feel daunting and overwhelming just by being even a simple thing as, can you write a motion to dismiss? Right. You know, that, that can then feel... This first time somebody asks you that, and if you haven't seen one... Yeah, I mean, you, your first question is, what does this look like? You know, what, um, I mean, I, I had clerked, so I did see motions come in, but uh, 
for me, I can actually remember that first one I got was asked, can you write a motion to dismiss? Okay, I've seen a motion to dismiss before because I clerked, I, I should be able to do this. Then it occurs to me, I clerked in the Northern District of Texas, not the Central District of California. Is there, are there differences to how they're supposed to be doing Yeah, it? in Texas, they put snake oil on the plate. <laughs> right, exactly, and it comes uh, delivered in a cowboy hat. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, so like those, you just immediately realize there are so many questions that you have. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is a little bit daunting to have those questions suddenly, they're on your plate and you realize you're the lawyer. Like the, the client your responsibility. You. One of the things we worry about is uh, mentoring and training in the pandemic and post-pandemic world where we have a work from anywhere policy. I mean, the way I learned and most of us learned really was being in the office. I mean, I shared an office with a senior associate when I started out at a big law firm. I could hear how that person spoke on the phone to clients, how, how they comported themselves. Uh, there were the water cooler conversations. It was easy to bump into people and get some guidance. I mean, that must be harder in, in the environment that we're in now. I would agree with that. Um, all that requires though, I think is a little bit of adaptation. I mean, this is the world we're in now. Um, and so, you know, where you described like a water cooler conversation, um, you know, I, I get that there are then ways to somewhat replicate that or replicate the benefit of a water cooler conversation through, um, you know, our much quicker remote communications technologies. I mean, it, it's about getting familiar with what is at your disposal. Um, in the same way that when you were first starting, what was at your disposal was the water cooler. Now what we have at our disposal, we have Zoom, we have Slack, we have you know, just regular old email and stuff like that. These are tools at our disposal that make uh, what can potentially be an isolating experience still um, feel like a, a mentoring. In so a how do you get that? I mean, if you have questions, I mean, how do you get help? I think there is now an, an appreciation and understanding that like I can just email someone, even a, a very senior person on, on a case and say like, I have this question, are you available um, to discuss? To some extent that also perhaps avoids the sort of surprise of knock on the door and they're, they're not able to talk, they're on the phone or something like that. You can just email and you can get a response when they're ready. And there's an acceptance that like, we need to make time available for that. Um, at least that's been my, experience here is that um, a recognition that we that's how we need to start doing things um, if we're going to be on this remote posture, um, which has plenty of its own benefits. And so, you know, with those benefits, find sort of new um, ways of going about things. And that's how I've seen it so far. It seems like there's a, a lot of people who really appreciate and thrive in this, you know, work from anywhere environment. They really like the idea that they don't have to come into the office, you know, not even pre-pandemic. We didn't have any requirements of FaceTime at our firm. But there are people who uh, I think feel liberated that they can, you know, stay home and work or, you know, go someplace uh, and work. And then there are other people who really miss the in-office experience, uh, that they want to be around uh, a bunch of people. And so we've also had to think about at the same time, how do we mentor and, and uh, you know, work with and promote people who are not in the office, but also think about how do we make that in-office experience more attractive to people who want to be in the office? Or would you say that you're in uh, one, of the, one camp more than the other of those two? I'm probably more in the camp of I like being in the office. I do like having um, in-person interactions. Um, that said, though, um, the benefits of being able to, like, instead of having to worry about fighting traffic to get into the office before I can even start work, being able to just start in on something is itself um, a benefit. Uh, being able to, if I have some sort of obligations, taking me somewhere else, but I still have the work in front of me, being able to do that. So I, I, I do prefer and I enjoy the in-person experience, the flexibility of, out, of being outside the office. I almost say it, it feels necessary at this point. Um, it, it's become part of our, our, our workflow. All right. I mean, tell us about uh, the professional experiences you've had. Uh, have you been involved in a trial yet? Have you been involved in depositions? What kinds of things, other than writing motions to dismiss, <laughs> right. ha have you been uh, involved in? I have yet to be in a trial, though I have um, arbitration hearings coming up in a couple of months, which I'm excited to, to be a part of, um, which I, I somewhat view that as 
very similar to a, a trial experience, you know, their evidentiary hearings, their things like that. So that's something I'm looking forward to. I have now second chaired probably 30 depositions. Um, these are depositions. That's that a I, lot of depositions. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been on a couple of large price fixing cases that um, mean a lot of depositions and a lot of preparing for those depositions. So, um, so by the 18th, uh, second chair, did, did, did you, what, you didn't raise your hand and say, I think I've seen enough of this. I can do it myself. It was talked about whether it was time to, to bring me in to do the, ultimately, um, there were some more senior associates uh, who wanted to get those opportunities as well. And I, I certainly appreciated um, that they still gave me the opportunity to be there and like to watch. I mean, I, with every one of them, I learned something. Um, and so you know, when it does come time for my first deposition, I think each one of those that I've second chaired um, will not gonna say it's gonna make it a seamless deposition. I think anyone's first deposition is uh, somewhere between a train wreck and what they're looking for. Make but. sure they swear the witness. That's exactly, exactly, yeah, 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 no, no, that, my word. That would be quite a start. <laughs> so what, what are there particular things in your career and your development that you're looking forward to now? So with this arbitration coming up and then with what I think is the next stage of my progression, which is to start actually taking the depositions and maybe even taking witnesses, I've gone from, I think about the facts, what we're trying to develop, the case we're trying to put on outside of actually putting on itself. Now it's that transition to actually building it as the person rather than a, an observer who has sort of the background knowledge in mind. That's, I think, the next exciting step. Um, for me that I hope is around the corner here. So, so far has it turned out to be uh, pretty much what you thought it would be when, when you first started at the firm or a little bit different? For the most part, yes. I mean, I come from a family of lawyers. Both of my parents are uh, lawyers. They worked in a big law firm. So they somewhat gave me um, a little bit of a rundown of what it was going to be like and um, the kind of assignments I would get. I will say, um, and this might be a, a, an idiosyncratic feature of this firm is that I have had more what I would call substantive experiences than I think um, a fair amount of my friends who are at other larger law firms. What, like, what do you mean by substantive experiences? So for example, my first assignment here at the firm was that motion to dismiss. I had somewhat thought that my first assignment would be research this facet of what will eventually become a motion right. to dismiss. No, for me- it, Caption and all. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was, here's the complaint. We want to dismiss this complaint and, you know, come up with the arguments. Um, and so it, that was a, a, an experience that um, I, I, I'm not sure others in their first day at the firm, at other firms would get. Um, so that's something that I think is, is a bit different here. Well, you paint a, a pretty rosy picture um, surely there's some things we could do better. Surely there's some moments where you feel like uh, the firm could have done better in supporting you or fill in the blank. Uh, some disappointments. I mean, I mean we, you know, we can hear it all, Matt, <laughs> warts and all. So I, I, I think the um, process of figuring out how mentoring works how um, development works in the post-COVID era is itself kind of building the ship as we're doing it. Um, and so there have been times where it, it feels potentially isolating. It feels like, you know, before I really felt comfortable just sending that email saying, I need to talk about something, um, do you have time? It can feel like you're somewhat just pedaling away at on the station by yourself, or something like that. you know, in a room. And it, does anybody know I'm here? That is a, a, what is a work in progress, something that I think is, is developing nicely. Um, but certainly I, I felt that. Well, we, we appreciate that feedback. Yeah. I have no doubt uh, we can do better in that regard. So looking forward, uh, you know, this business of being an associate in a law firm, some people come because you know, it seemed like you can go to law school and then become a lawyer, keep your options open. Who knows, I might go to the government, I might go in-house, I might become a, a journalist, or as in the case of at least one of our associates, become a psychotherapist. 
What, how's it looking like for you? How do you think about, you, your parents are both lawyers, so I'm guessing maybe you've always thought that's a possibility, I'm going to have a career as a lawyer. How do you think about that now? How do you think about the possibility of becoming a partner in the firm, this unknown thing which is going to be in the hands of other people? Yeah, so sort of taking all the way back to step one, both my parents being lawyers, I was convinced I was never going to be a lawyer. Uh, I saw what they did and thought this is miserable. Um, and then I took some pre-law classes in law school just, or in, before law school just because and it turns out I really enjoyed it. And it you couldn't get I away from it. Was no, I didn't, it turned out it was unavoidable ex after Exactly. All. I didn't fall very far from the tree there. Um, why, you know, coming into a big law firm like this to start, that was mainly driven by I wanted to learn how to do law, how to be a lawyer at the highest level. Um, and the counsel from my parents was, well, you got to go to a big law firm. You got to go to a place where um, they're dealing with the highest stakes, um, where precision is expected, where um, you know the smartest people are hashing and rehashing arguments to make sure that it is refined just the way it, it should be. Um, so you know, that's what then drew me there. As far as then, future, um, I think something that the first couple years here at the firm, and I th imagine this is the case with a lot of junior associates, as I'm now transitioning into mid, um, is that you, start, you somewhat narrow your gaze a bit to how do I become a really good lawyer? You've, I'm now exposed to this is what the practice looks like. This is all that goes into it. Every day I'm finding out, wait, we have to think about this issue. We have to think about that. Here's a client relation thing, something like that. So then it becomes, okay, how do I take each day? What sorts of things can I learn to become a better lawyer? Where that then takes me down the road, partnership, if if so granted, um, is certainly a, a, a thought, a, um, a hope. Um, but it, it, right now it, largely is like just trying to be as good a lawyer as I can be, serve the clients as, as well as I can, um, and generally try not to you know, make anyone mad along the way. <laughs> um, well, it sounds like you're learning a lot. I, I think so. I feel I am um, leagues ahead of where I was when I first started, um, just having a feel for what you need to do every day as a lawyer. So I would agree. <laughs> Well, Matt, thanks for uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Thanks for everything you do for our firm and for our clients. Thank you for having me. This is John Quinn, and this has been Law Disrupted. <laughs>